Welcome into Weld.com, everyone. Today, I've got a good episode for you. I'm gonna show you how you can charge top dollar when it comes to simple handrail work. Let's get into it. So check it out. I've got my handrail here in front of me. If you recall, last time we did this, we did it at Precision and Welding Academy, and we did more of a, you know, a round handrail with pipe or tubing, and we didn't necessarily put the right finish on there. You could see my grinding marks straight through that paint, and that's what we're gonna show you today, is how you can get a better finish on a handrail so that you can charge more money for what you're doing. So I've got my handrail here. This is more or less just a little piece of simulation of different ways that you might see some joint configurations on them when it comes to square pipe, square tubing. We've got our miter cuts here we've got welds and corners that we need to knock down here on the other ends we've got some end caps so that we got to make sure that we get a nice finish on the end caps and of course we've got welds on the inside corners and these pickets a lot of times customers don't necessarily want to see those high heavy welds especially when we're MIG welding everything you could use a different process to make those welds smaller but we all know MIG is pretty quick that's why you'll see it a lot of the times doing this type of work today I've got a whole bunch of different power tools and air tools in front of me with different types of abrasives try different things like a right angle grinder. The pneumatic die grinder with the little bristle tip on there. It's kind of like an alternative for a wire wheel. Two pneumatic file belt tools here. One with an expansion wheel, one with one of these little finger belts on it. And then we have our orbital sander here too. We're going to use all these tools in front of me to see what works and what gives the best finish to make this thing nice and silky smooth. My first mission is going to be taking down these corners. I want to flatten these welds on the sides, get these corners nice and sharp, and I want to get these end caps looking nice and square all the way around. This is an easy task to handle with a right angle grinder, so that's what I'm going to start with. You have guys seen me on the channel before using these 3M Cubitron fiber discs. This is going to be the metal eater right here. It's going to be perfect for removing the weld without putting too much deep scratches on there. Then I'm going to switch over to the Scotch-Brite surface conditioning pad. This one's going to be really nice to slap on the grinder after I use that fiber disc to put it a nice smooth finish and sharpen these corners up without taking too much material off. Before we can get started, let's make sure we get our PPE on. I got my skull screws in for some hearing protection. And when it comes to these types of finishing and everything, it's not necessarily required to have a face shield on, but we are gonna wear one anyway because we got a lot of grinding, a lot of work to do, and I just don't want anything in my peepers. We're gonna start on the top side of this rail and get this corner as well as maybe flipping it over. I'm gonna set my variable speed on this grinder all the way up to six. I'm having to be pretty freaking careful when it comes to removing that weld. I don't want to get any of that base material lower than that. There are some moments just like this right here where I still see that there's a line. I can go chase it with this wheel, but I know with this surface conditioning wheel, I can smoothen that out and get that without digging or gouging into the material. So I'm not gonna touch it anymore with this. Now, if we look really, really close, I've got the top smooth and I've got a nice sharp corner. I got all this nasty, chunky, meaty stuff right here. This is where you really take some skill to maintain the radius of the tubing without flattening it right here to an absolute point. I'm gonna do similar to what I did on the top here and bring it really close to that base material, but I'm gonna let this less gritty disc handle the rest. Kind of like giving metal a haircut. Some haircuts will cost you 20 bucks, and other haircuts will cost you 60 bucks. And the $60 haircut usually takes a little bit more time. That barber is usually a little bit more meticulous. That's kind of what we're doing here. We're trimming and edging and getting the right lines on this material, just like a barber would. We're gonna flip this old guy around and get these end caps. Basically what we're gonna do here, because it's a square, and again, those corners are where I'm gonna be a little bit more meticulous. I'm just gonna hit flat, 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 and then tap, 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 tap on those corners. If you listen to your grinder, it'll tell you the right angle you're supposed to be operating at. We don't wanna be on the tip here, and if I hit too flat, I'll hit that nut, and it sends shivers up my spine every time I do it. So I really wanna maintain the proper work angle. Rotate. <clears throat> I 
If I notice on that corner, there's not a whole lot of metal that needs to remove, I'm not gonna touch it. This obviously isn't ready for paint yet. I think all we have to do now to really get things ready is to switch over to the Scotch-Brite Precision HD Surface Conditioning Disc. And what I really like about this disc compared to that one, which you can get the ones with the Tinnerman nut, but that right there will keep me from rubbing that flange nut across my work. So all I'm gonna do with this is do exactly what I did with that fiber disc, but it's gonna make things super smooth. I'm not gonna hit radiuses on the corners. I'm gonna try to leave everything as sharp as I can. This is the wheel that I'm trying to chase these little blemishes out with, and I'm trying to keep my grinding marks all the same direction. I think we're just about good with those caps. I'm gonna move on over to these corners. It's a marathon, guys, not a race. Right. It's a marathon, not a sprint. They're both races. All I'm looking for is getting those blemishes out, those grinding marks the same direction, and those scratches from the previous disc disappear. Looks like I got some pretty sharp corners on here, and this thing could probably be ready for paint. We do want to get some of the silica and some of the stuff off the weld, but again, you could take it another step, and we are. We're going to be using this bristle brush, kind of like a wire wheel on the welds, but it's a lot more forgiving than a wire wheel on your face and stuff like that, and this Scotch-Brite Clean and Strip Pro disc to get all this mill scale, and even take what we did with the other surface conditioning disc and kind of blend things in a little bit more to the rest of the material. Oh, yeah, that looks nice. That's nice already. If you have the luxury of moving a part around at this point, you're gonna be putting scratches on this part if you're not putting something nice and soft underneath you, like a piece of rubber or just a piece of wood or something so you don't scratch the material. You can see obviously where we've already grinded and blended in compared to this side where we just take that Scotch-Brite Clean and Strip Pro and just hit all the faces we could touch. Now getting on the inside here to clean up some of those welds, obviously this angle grinder is not the right tool for it. This bristle brush, it'll get into those spots. The big thing with this type of grinder is you got metal all around your spinning bits. And those metal bits are spinning just as fast as your other spinny bits and you don't wanna rub those spinny bits on your part. This thing can get away from you a little bit easier than say like an angle grinder, especially when you're working in corners. Be aware of that, have a good grip, have all the safety gear intact. I like these bristles a lot. I used them mostly whenever I was working on stainless steels where materials definitely couldn't get cross contaminated. And these bristle brushes were always a safer alternative to clean up a weld after we got done welding it. still getting into those spots but I got to get these weird angles for right now with what we're going to try to accomplish and just kind of getting the schmutz off and cleaning it all up that's going to be fine but like I said we're still going to take it another step for further finish this up with the scotch break now this right here She's ready for three mil of paint. It looks like we got all of our corners the same. It looks like everything's running into itself. All the seams are blended, but it's still not perfect. There are some little nuances to it that really bug me. It might be what makes or breaks that extra dollar amount that you can charge for this. If you notice these little corners right in here, you can see even on the blend, there's a little bit of a nugget. We gotta take down. And if we're gonna round those corners off, we might as well smoothen out the face of these welds. Same thing with all these pickets. All these pickets are fine and dandy, but I believe they got a little bit of an oversized weld, especially in some of those corners. We want them to all look about the same. That and along with some of these spots that we can't get an angle grinder in to clean up some of that mill scale or some of that schmutz and everything, we're gonna need a different tool. That's when the finger belt sander is gonna come in. We've got all these different abrasives we're gonna use. It has a little bit more flex and a little bit more give 
and it really works into these corners so that we can just shore up the face of these welds, get them all the same shape, the same size. And as we sand them, you know we're gonna probably put some scuffs on what we've already done. This is something that you would wanna do before you go about scot spriting the whole thing. Then we're gonna switch to a different belt for the finger belt sander, just like we did with the rest of this project. We'll put a scotch bright belt on there and then finish with all the big faces last. Now this is one of those moments that you wanna put your your old face shield down, get in the right mood because it's gonna take a second. And we just wanna make sure everything's right. Don't rush it, be very meticulous. There's two parts to this belt. You'll notice that there is a softer spot for getting around corners and then one with a little bit more of a backer for these flatter spots. So you're gonna pick and choose what side of this you'll end up using. You guys might notice we changed out the end on the finger grinder here. I found that this belt and this wheel on the end gave me a little bit more life and a little bit more control over things. Now that that's done, it does look a little bit worse before it gets better because we've got grinding scratches all where we went to blend in all of our tie-ins, our starts and stops, blended the different size welds down. So we've got to pop this guy off and we've got to put that scotch bright back on so we can start getting those spots back to even with the other parts on our handrail here. So we'll pop that off, slide this one on, and we're ready to rock and roll. All right, now that that's all kind of wrapped up, we've got everything smoothed down and blended. The corners are a lot nicer now. Everything feels really smooth. I have to still be honest, when we were sanding, I did a little over grinding on the square tubing in a couple spots where the welds meet the square tubing. That's something to stay conscious of as you're trying to put a nice finish on something. We're not trying to necessarily remove or touch a whole lot of the base material, but more or less the welds. Not only that, but we've got grinding marks going different directions now, so we're gonna do one more finish on this, and that's where the orbital sander will come in. You can see when I hit this, that wheel spins in a bunch of different directions. So compared to, say, the grinding disc that's always spin in a certain direction, we're gonna have a different type of finish on here, and I really love the way an orbital puts a finish on. So that's what we're gonna do every freaking wear without trying to ruin any of sharp corners. love an orbital sander man it just hides so much the fact that all the scratches are going different directions you can really blend in a lot of stuff with it it doesn't remove a lot of material we did switch to a 60 grit in order to get the finish we got here probably not something that i would do if i was going to put some paint on there because i mean look at that just a really crisp finish with all those little scratches and those little marks give a nice reflection on the material i really like it there's a lot of good things that i'm seeing here my corners are really clean the lines are really straight, my edges are sharp, my caps are sharp. What I don't like about this is maybe I needed a smaller belt to get into some of these spots and corners on the smaller tubing because I did a little bit of over grinding. That's something that we don't really want to see because you're going to see it through paint. As far as grinding marks and all that goes, we're good. We're ready for three mils of paint. And again, if you didn't want to put this finish with an orbital on there, we could have stopped with the scotch Bright wheel. I digress. Everything that you've seen in this video today, you can find more information down below in the links in the description. That way you too can put a proper finish on something and charge more for your work. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I did. We'll see y'all on the next weld. What's it called? Thank you. We've got two file belt sanders here. It's like going back to elementary school, school where I can't say my R's today. We've got two file belt sanders here. Fudge monkeys. Why can't I say that? <laughs> Looks like I got some, got like burping.